the alien mercenaries shat themselves in their combat suits when they saw the human special ops troops emerge from the tree line, bristling with bloodlust and advanced weaponry. Commander Xenos slammed a fist on the control panel of the LMS Krathnar, nearly cracking the display. They expect us to fight those things for this pathetic amount of credits. It's a fucking death sentence. Captain Zax leaned back in his chair, metal arm whirring. So what are we going to do, Commander? We already took the client's money. We're leaving, Xenos growled. I don't care about the contract. Let those spineless corporate pricks send someone else in as cannon fodder. Xenos thought back to the briefing. Their client, a megacorp trying to put down a colonial revolt, had assured them it would be easy. Just a bunch of farmers and miners with small arms. Nothing serious. In and out, with five hundred battle-hardened Lurians in power armor. But then they'd landed and seen them. Fifty humans in midnight black suits that seemed to drink in the light. Their weapons looked more like arcane scepters than rifles. The sight had turned Xenos's blood to ice. This was no unruly mob. These were killers, the kind you heard whispered about in seedy station bars. These weren't humans, they were demons. What about the collateral? Zack said. If we bail, the client might send mercs after us. Let them try, Xenos spat. Better that than getting turned into a human's wall trophy. He hit the ship-wide comms. All personnel, prepare for immediate dust-off. Forget the fucking contract. We're getting off this spirits-forsaken rock. Protest erupted from the crew. They needed this payday. Xenos cut them off. I'm not letting you die for pocket change. The client fucked us, and I'm unfucking us. If you want to fight those things, you can damn well fly down and try. I'm leaving. Now get to your stations or you're swimming home. Zax exhaled. I hope you know what you're doing. So do I. Xenos watched the humans melt back into the shadows as the ship shuddered, rising on columns of blue fire. So do I. Xenos stared into the void outside the cockpit glass as the Krathenar broke atmosphere. His eyes saw the stars, but his mind was still stuck on that fateful encounter. It was unbelievable, Zax. Those humans, the Astar, they didn't even flinch when our troops lined up on them. Five hundred of the galaxy's most ruthless bastards, a damn good tactical position, and the most advanced armor outside council space, and they just stood there, calm as you like. Zax shifted in his seat. What, all of them, not even a ripple in the formation? Not a one. It was creepy as all fuck. We thought we had them dead to rights. They didn't even have their weapons up. And then their captain steps up and starts speaking perfect Lurian, accent and all, tells us to drop our guns and surrender. Oh, you're shitting me. Where'd a human learn to talk like us? Fuck if I know. But that wasn't even the crazy part. I laughed in his face, told him he had quite the quad on him, then ordered the boys to light him up. Xenos's voice dropped to a whisper. And then... Then he said something, Zax. One word, in a language I'd never heard before or since. And you know what happened. Zax leaned forward, metal hand gripping his armrest. What? Every single gun went dead, locked up, no power, no nothing. It was like he reached out and crushed the power cells in his fist. I've never seen tech like that before, never even heard of it. Zax's mechanical fingers clenched and unclenched, servos whining. How in the seven hells is that possible? What kind of... You think if I knew I'd be running with my tail between my legs? All I know is in that moment, staring down a human who'd just made fools of us without lifting a finger, I knew we were in over our heads. We weren't facing soldiers, Zax. We were facing something else. Something new. Zenos fell silent, gazed distant. Zax said nothing, his own mind reeling. He'd heard the rumors about the Astar, the ghost stories told by grunts and mercs who'd had one too many. He'd always dismissed them as drunken horse shit. But now with his friend shaking in the chair beside him, each word ringing with the clarity of stone-cold sobriety, now, he wondered. Zax looked out at the stars and shivered. What the fuck had the humans cooked up out there in the black? And what did it mean for the rest of them? Zax stared at his friend, 
trying to process the implications of what he had just heard. So what happened next? Did Mitchell just let you go after revealing they had been spying on us the whole time? Zeno shook his head, his eyes haunted by the memory. No, not exactly. After he disabled our weapons, Mitchell walked right up to me, bold as brass. He had two of his soldiers with him, flanking him like an honor guard. And let me tell you, Zax, up close, those Astar boys are even more unsettling. How so? Zax asked, leaning forward in his seat. Their armor, for one thing. It's not just black, it's... It's like it eats the light, like staring into a shadow that stares back. And the way they move, it's not natural, too fluid, too precise. Like machines wearing skin. Zack suppressed a shudder, his metal hand clenching reflexively. And what did Mitchell say when he got to you? Saizinos laughed, a harsh, bitter sound. Oh, he was real polite. Said his unit had been watching us since we entered the system, tracking our every move. They knew exactly who we were, who we worked for, and what we were there to do. Fuck me, Zax breathed. They were on us the whole time? Looks like it. And here's the kicker. Mitchell said they didn't want to fight, that if we packed up and left they'd let us go, no hard feelings. But if we stayed... Zenos trailed off, his eyes distant. If you stayed, Zax prompted. He said there would be consequences... Dire ones, whatever the fuck that means in human speak. And the way he said it, Zax, it wasn't a threat. It was a fact. Like he was telling me the sky was blue, or that plasma burns. Zax whistled softly. Cocky bastard, so what did you do? Zeno's grimaced, his pride still stinging from the memory. What could I do? I asked him how they shut down our guns. Figured maybe we could salvage something from this clusterfuck, get some intel on their tech. And what did he say? The smug prick smiled at me. Actually fucking smiled. Said it was easy, just a little trick they cooked up, based on a flaw they found in our power cell design. A flaw they've known about for spirits know how long. Zax's eyebrows shot up in surprise. They knew about a vulnerability in our tech and didn't tell anyone. Why would they sit on something like that? Zenos gave his friend a grim look. Come on, Zax, you know why. It's what they do. They hoard knowledge, keep it locked up tight until they need it, and then they use it like a fucking hammer, right when it hurts the most. Zax nodded slowly, realization dawning. It's a tactic, a weapon. Exactly. And it's not the first time they've pulled this kind of shit. There's a reason the Council treads careful around them, why even the Krell think twice before fucking with Earth. The humans, they play the long game. They watch and they wait and they strike when you least expect it. Zax sat back in his chair, his mind reeling with the implications. Spirits above, no wonder they're so feared. Feared? Zeno snorted, more like respected. Or maybe just treated with the caution you give a viper in the nest. You don't poke it, you don't provoke it. You just hope that when it bites, it bites someone else. The two mercenaries fell silent each lost in their own thoughts as the stars streamed past the cockpit windows. The humans had outplayed them, Zax realized. They had outplayed them before the game even started. And something told him this was just the beginning, that there were more surprises waiting out there in the void, more human tricks and traps lying in wait. The question was, would the galaxy be ready for them when they finally sprang? Xenos's voice was heavy as he continued his tale. I couldn't believe it, Zax. My pride, my rage at being so easily outmaneuvered, it consumed me. I ordered the troops to draw plasma blades and charge to engage the Astar in close combat. I thought maybe, just maybe, we could catch them by surprise with a sudden assault. Zax leaned forward, his organic eye wide. And what happened? Xenos shook his head, his gaze distant. It was over before it began. The moment my soldiers rushed forward, the humans... They moved like nothing I've ever seen. Blurring, weaving, their own blades flashing out in arcs of shimmering black. They cut through our armor like it was parchment. He paused, his breath shaky. I watched, Zax. Watched as my troops fell one after another, their swords not even scratching the Astar's suits. It was like they were fighting wraiths, not men. In seconds it was done. I stood there, alone, 
surrounded by the bodies of my men. Zax's metal fist clenched. Spirits, Zenos, I can't even imagine. No, you can't, Zenos said softly. And then, as I stood there in shock, Captain Mitchell approached me again. His blade was dripping with Lurian blood, but his face, it was calm, as if he'd just finished a light training bout, not a massacre. Zenos's voice took on a hollow tone. He looked at me and he spoke, said my soldiers fought with courage but that we'd underestimated them, that we never had a chance, and then he gave me a choice. A choice? Zax asked. Zenos nodded. Surrender and be treated as a prisoner of war under human law, or... He swallowed. Or face the same end as my troops. It wasn't a threat, Zax. Just a statement of fact. Zax exhaled slowly. So you surrendered? I did, Zenos whispered. I dropped my sword and I knelt before him there in the dirt and the blood. Because in that moment, I finally understood what we were facing. And I knew with total certainty that to fight further would be suicide. He looked at Zax, his eyes haunted. They beat us, Zax, completely and utterly, and they did it without breaking a sweat. So tell me, my friend, what do we do against an enemy like that? Zax stared back, his expression grim. I don't know, Zenos. Spirits help me, I don't know. Zenos fell silent, his eyes distant as he recalled the aftermath of his surrender. Zax leaned forward, his metal fingers tapping against the armrest. What happened after you surrendered? How did the humans treat you? Xenos sighed, his shoulders slumping. They took us into custody, me and the few of my soldiers who survived. I expected brutality, or at least cold indifference, but the Astar soldiers were... professional. They tended to our wounds, provided us with food and water, basic needs. He shook his head. But I couldn't shake the feeling of unease, Zax. The way they looked at us, the way they spoke, it, it was like we were insects to them. Curiosities, not threats. Zax nodded slowly. They had no reason to fear you, not after what they did. No, they didn't, Zenos agreed. And that's what scared me the most. As they transported us to a holding facility, I overheard two of them talking. They were discussing what would happen to us. He leaned back, his gaze fixed on the ceiling. One of them mentioned interrogation, said they'd squeeze us for info on our employers, then they'd turn us over to the council for trial. Zax's organic eye widened. The council, they're getting involved. Zenos laughed, a harsh, grating sound. Of course they are. We attacked a human colony, Zax. That's not something the council can ignore, not with the power the humans wield. He paused, his voice dropping to a whisper. But that's not the worst part. The other soldier he laughed when his buddy mentioned the council, said we were lucky they weren't handling our punishment themselves. Zax felt a chill run down his spine. What did he mean by that? As Enos met his gaze, his eyes haunted. He said that what the council would do to us was nothing compared to what the humans would do if they had their way. That attacking one of their colonies was unforgivable. Zack sat back, his mind reeling. He had always known the humans were powerful, that they were not to be trifled with, but this, this was beyond anything he had imagined. So what do we do now? he asked, his voice barely above a whisper. Xanos was silent for a long moment. When he finally spoke, his words were heavy with resignation. We pray, Zax, we pray to whatever gods we believe in, that we never find ourselves on the wrong side of humanity again, because if we do, spirits help us all. The two Lurians sat in silence, the weight of Xenos's words hanging in the air between them. They had always believed themselves to be the apex predators of the galaxy, the most feared and respected of all the mercenary bands. But now, faced with the terrible reality of human power, they realized they were nothing more than pawns in a game they could never hope to win. The humans held all the cards, and the Lurians. The Lurians were just another hand to be played. Zax looked out at the stars, his metal fist clenching and unclenching. The galaxy had changed, and they had been too blind to see it, too arrogant to realize that they were no longer the hunters, but the hunted. And the humans. The humans were the ultimate predators. 
silent, unseen, and unstoppable, gods among the stars, with the power to reshape the very fabric of the universe to their will. He shuddered, a cold sweat beading on his brow. What hope did they have against such an enemy? What chance did anyone have? You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.